Okay, cool. So we're going to do some detective work. I was... Okay, so we're back again with some CSS detective work. We're going to want to just look through some work and uh, try and gain some insights from the technologies behind how it's built. Today we're actually looking at uh, another work from Amit Sheen. Who I previously looked at his uh, morphing text effect to see how that was done. Uh, but uh, yet again, he's done something that you just can't even comprehend how you get to this level. So this is a CSS cannon. You can click the top here to spin around the scene, both left and right direction. You can get a different angle here. You can click and hold this cannon to make it move up and down, leave it at a certain angle, and then hit shot for it to shoot a colored ball out that will then explode. And you can just gear up to uh, shoot again. All of which looks like it's been done in some sort of 3D rendering engine that assumes like a 3JS or some sort of complex uh, fancy library. And then you look at this and realize not only is there no fancy outside library, no pre-rendering step or anything, there's not even any JavaScript. This entire thing is built in CSS. How do you even begin going about that? Okay, so this, first just think about three dimensions is a kind of known thing you can do in CSS. Uh, and CSS does have three dimensions. You can skew things and give them a, a third dimensional axis. But it's often just kind of done for a kind of an illustration or something to kind of give a perception or you kind of do a skew translation to make something move slightly or bend. You can sort of create a cube, but it really is kind of held together visually, kind of don't think too much about what's going on behind the cube because it's kind of just rendered to pre present to you in a, a, a flat uh, projection of a 3D image. But obviously you can do that. So here we've got the floor, which is uh, an image. It's a flat square, you know, regular div. Uh, you give it a background image, which here looks like is um, that radial gradient of color, as well as a kind of um, short stop series of images that created this grid with color. So you've got a background color here, which is that kind of light gray, you know, that could just be blue. Ooh, that's nice. And then background image here is said to be a gradient. So uh, I guess that's the light from the center that emanates out. And then you just hit a, a transform on it. So basically it's just a, flat div but you're, you're deciding to give it a, a skew bend rotate to sort of just place it like a floor and because of again you're working in three dimensions that follows that makes sense creating a cube in CSS is kind of fairly straightforward as I mentioned before you can use all those skew properties and you'll give the projection of one here's a, here's a quick example I found you could then make a div for top left and front uh, and you can just give them the kind of the rotate translate properties and what your render is basically this and it, There you go. There's the left side right side top side as long as you don't look around the back It looks like it's a 3d object But you could obviously go the full hog of building those six sides You could build the bottom you could build the the, the two sides on the back. You won't see them uh, Unless you were to rotate that cube but if you were to put all of those elements inside a parent container and then put a rotation on that, that will essentially happen. And as long as they're dimensionally in the correct place, you will have built a cube. It's not uh, a cube in the strictest sense that like 3JS, where it's rendering a geometry, it's rendering a fixed element and that those, uh, that mesh is kind of aware of its own shape and position. This is really a kind of an appearance is a fallacy in which you are presenting a series of slides and, uh, they sort of hold together based on their own properties, but none of them is at all really aware of any other shape next to it or around it. So here inside the player, there's a the base, which works on the ba that structure. You have a top, bottom, front, back, left. You basically just construct six different div elements. You give them all the same basic gradient, and you just sit there and play with the numbers until you've got them all orientated to build a cube. Top layer on there. And then there's the cannon, which is works in the same way. Yeah, top, bottom, left, front, back. So you're just building cubes, you're building blocks, 
and you modularly would build one that one stays in a fixed place so there is a class rotate right which provides an animation rotate x 10 seconds infinite and rotate left which does it but in reverse that makes sense left is the reverse of right and that will just perform a rotate from 0 to 360 degrees so uh, there is a rotate right element which contains within it a rotate left element which contains within it the base with the floor with the gun with everything like that so when you trigger rotate left uh, I guess at that point you're you're triggering that animation to play right so oh where is that gonna be it's a lot there it is so turn right a lot of CSS actions generally rely on uh, HTML elements that have some state to them because that's somewhere you can actually set something to be moving or to set to be happening or not uh, here we're using the active so I guess it's a button and then on the active state so basically while you're clicking and holding down on a button it's in active state and at that point you can find the sibling game rotate right and at that point set the animation play state to running so when I click here while I'm holding down while it's active you can just uh, find the rotate right and say your animation go and it will start moving and then the the rotate left which is inside of that element you can instead click and say no no now it's your turn to play you can only be clicking one button at a time so even though left is inside right it doesn't really matter with the order you just as long as uh, there are parent elements which have the ability to rotate the child that they both have of, of the game it means that you can sort of um, you, you both have control of that animation, one obviously doing it in the opposite to the other and you can skew things. Just a really intelligent way of um, basically using for something that it's, it's probably not meant for, but to sort of say, I'm going to play off this button state to kind of trigger things and skew things. In terms of what the user sees, you genuinely are um, rotating a scene for them. It's just amazing how uh, flaky it is under the hood. <laughs> you can see here too, the, the cannon move is the same thing so uh, when I'm holding down here it's again the active state is setting an animation to move up and down the amazing thing is obviously as soon as you let go the animation stops so it just stops wherever it was in that animation to move up and down again so it looks like an incredibly precise like user control to say like you let go at the point you want it to really there's no way of doing it other than that you'd have to just sort of uh, if they stop clicking then you have to stop the animation so shot We've got checked here, so you'd have to assume that when you're clicking shot, you are checking a checkbox which is hidden off the page somewhere, but it has a matching label of some kind. And at that point, uh, the button changes its text. Shot text here. Animation shot text. Kind of move. Then the cube, which uh, I would have to assume is the cube being shot out cube explode animation uh, happens after that things so basically at that point you shoot uh, it triggers another animation which is only going to happen this one time bum 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 everything blows up lovely and then because it's a checked checkbox you couldn't trigger it again unless you uncheck it so I guess while it's checked it will show this reload button we have to uncheck that checkbox so we can reset the state and do it again amazing <laughs> so that's all we really got time for but it's um a very quick run through it's, it's definitely worth digging through in more detail if you get the chance just amazing how we can think about creating game-like experience 3d style appearance um, interactivity games all kind of fun stuff and all just with CSS it's um really cool um, very inspiring but uh, that's all for today go have a lovely time